hi everyone welcome back today in this video we are going to see how to prepare the purchase return book and sales return book and we are also going to understand how to do the posting of these two books into the ledger accounts but now before doing all of that let's just understand few of the basic things regarding purchase return and sales return the first thing is really common sense that is purchase return is exactly opposite to purchase account and sales return is exactly opposite to sales account so if these two things are opposite purchase and purchase return sales and sales return then the rules of debit and credit will also be opposite that way okay purchase has debit balance purchase return will have credit balance sales have credit balance sales return will have debit balance is that okay right so whenever you want to record any purchase return you will have to credit that whenever you want to record any sales return you will have to debit that is that okay yes now the second thing that i want to let you know is the process of purchase return and sales return and what all things are involved in it so that you will have an entire clarity with the journal entries now i know you will not be passing the journal entries in the real life businesses because purchase return and sales return of credit purchases and of credit sales will be happening in subsidiary books but still i want to make you understand the mechanism behind the subsidiary books because i have been telling in the purchase book video also in the sales book video the journal entry mechanism and the subsidiary book mechanism is exactly same the accounting effect is exactly same all right so let's start with this example and let's understand the process of purchase return let's say you have purchased 10000 worth of goods from your supplier chandu and let's say you haven't paid anything you purchase those goods on credit so now tell me what would be the journal entry of this transaction it's very simple you say we all know the journal entry of a credit purchase purchase account debit 10000 to supplier or to chandu to payables to creditors yeah 10000 because liability is increasing to chandu i have to pay to chandu 10000 so i will record that liability is increasing 10000 yes that would be the journal entry of a credit purchase now what happened was once you receive those 10,000 worth of goods and when you open the box you found out that 2,000 worth of goods were damaged. So you decided to return those goods back to your supplier back to Chandu. Okay and obviously this activity of returning the goods which you purchased previously is called as purchase return. Yeah you all know that. Now there is also one more name to it this activity that is called return outwards why return outwards because understand it's very simple the goods are going out of the business back to chandu from your point of view the goods are going out so it's called return it's also called as return outwards is that okay fine now one more thing you have to understand along with the goods along with the goods which you are returning you will also send out a document to your supplier and that document would be called as debit note debit note and obviously in that debit note there will be information the particulars and all the information regarding the goods which you are returning and also there is one more significance to this debit note which you have to understand logically okay and you can only understand that once you understand the journal entry of purchase return right so let's see the journal entry of purchase return now what happened over here in this activity two things have happened the first is you have returned the goods so purchase account has to be decreased isn't it if you see properly have you purchased 10,000 worth of goods yes you have but after the return have you purchased 10,000 do you have 10,000 worth of goods in your warehouse no you only have 8,000 worth of goods because 2,000 you have returned so purchase account has to be decreased isn't it purchase account has to be decreased and the second thing is that you had to pay 10,000 to Chandu, but since you have returned 2,000 worth of goods, so how much you have to pay? You have to pay only 8,000, isn't it? Yes. So two things you have to do. You have to decrease the purchase account and you have to reduce the liability to Chandu. You have to pay only 8,000, but in the books right now, you have to pay 10,000. Yeah, you recorded 10,000 over here in the purchase, credit purchase entry. So you have to reduce the purchases and reduce the liability. Now this we can do directly, we can reduce the Chandu account, yeah, the supplier account, but purchases account we do not decrease it directly. What we do is we create a, you know, a dummy account which is called as purchase return account, okay. And you all know purchase return is exactly opposite to purchases. 
so the rule of debit and credit is also opposite purchase has debit balance purchase return has credit balance now here what happened purchase return is increasing purchase return happened now nah? so purchase return is increasing so that's why you will credit the purchase return you will record the purchase return okay you will record it and then what will happen is in the financial statement you will deduct the purchase return from purchases ultimately the effect will be given in financial statement but in the general entries and all what will happen purchase return will be credited over here is that okay fine so purchase return will be credited i got that because it's exactly opposite to purchases it acts against purchases fine i got that why supplier account is debited why chandu account or payable account is getting debited why is that because see you don't have to pay 2000 to chandu anymore do you no you don't have to pay that you have returned the goods so you have to debit the chandu account debit the supplier account you have to reduce the liability yeah and you will do that you will reduce the liability by 2000 and that is what you have mentioned in the debit note the significant the second significance of the debit note is that you are letting the supplier know you know by giving the debit note you are letting the supplier know see mr supplier see mr chandu in my books i have reduced the liability by 2000 i will not pay you 2000 yeah because i am returning the goods that's the significance of the debit note do you understand who will issue the debit note the buyer will issue the debit note who we are the buyer now we purchase the goods and we are returning the goods back to the supplier we are the buyer we are issuing the debit note because because we are returning the goods and our liability has been decreased we don't have to pay that 2000 so by receiving the debit note supplier will understand that my account in his books in this in your books have been debited debit note debited do you understand supplier account the other party account has been debited so debit note will be issued by us is that clear debit note will be issued now in debit note we will mention that we will mention a message that please mr supplier issue us issue us a credit note now you don't know what is credit note what is credit note see it's simple credit note is exactly opposite to the debit note supplier also has to do some adjustment in the books can we directly say that we will not pay you 2000 no supplier also has to give the acceptance so from credit note he will give his acceptance yeah he will check the goods once he receive the returned goods he will check yeah if he is satisfied with those goods then he will accept okay fine you know i am at fault and you know you don't have to pay me 2000 he will write that down and he will issue a note a document that's called credit note okay and the significance of this is that the treatment has been done in the supplier account yeah in the supplier i mean in the supplier books the treatment has been done what treatment he has reduced his asset like how we reduce our liability over here to chandu we don't have to pay 2000 similarly the supplier he's a seller now from his point of view this is sales return so in his books he will reduce the asset yeah let's say your name your name is let's say david yeah so uh, he will reduce the David account by 2000 from David. I will not receive 2000 that adjustment he has to do Yeah, so once we receive the credit note, you know We get the idea that and we give you know, we get a sense of what do you say idea that you know I don't have to pay 2000 is that clear? So we sent out a debit note Informing the supplier that we have debited his account and we will not pay 2000 and of course the information of the goods return will be there in the debit note and we will ask for a credit note and when we receive the credit note it means that you know the adjustment has been done in the other party's books also okay is that clear right now let's move on to the sales return example now see here we have the sales return example it's kind of opposite to the purchase return so few of the things will be opposite see here you are the seller over here right now in the previous example in the purchase return you were the buyer so here you are the seller and let's say you had sold previously 10,000 worth of goods to your customer Rahul, for example, and that was a credit sale. So what would be the general entry of that credit sale? Simple, customer account debit to sales account. Sales is revenue, you have credited that and you have to receive 10,000 money from Rahul since this is a credit sale. So you have recognized the Rahul account, customer account debit. It's your asset, right? Asset is increasing, you have debited that. You have to receive 10,000 money customer account debit or you can say receivables account debit debtor account debit or rahul account debit fine so that was the general entry of the credit sale 
Now what happened was, let's say for some reason, your customer returned some of the goods back. And along with those goods, what you will get, you already know, you will get a debit note. Yeah. Now, if you just connect these two examples, then here you are the supplier, isn't it? You are the supplier. So you are receiving the goods and along with the goods, you are receiving a debit note. So you are, you know, getting the idea that oh, customer has debited my account in his books by the, you know, the worth of these goods. And now I have to issue a credit note. Isn't it? That's the idea, isn't it? Yes. So what would be the journal entry of this transaction? Simple journal entry. See here. Sales return is exactly opposite to sales. Sales return has which balance? It has debit balance. So sales return will be debited. As I said, you know, we cannot directly decrease the sales by debiting the sales account. There is no error happening over here. The activity has happened. You have sold previously 10,000 and now sales return is taking place. So a separate dummy account is open. That's called sales return account. And later in the financial statement, what will happen? You will deduct the amount of sales return from the sales. Okay, that's what you do. Fine. So sales return account, what will happen? You have to debit that amount. Let's say 2,000. So 2,000. And you will, you know, reduce the value. You will reduce the asset value. Why? Because you are no longer going to receive 2,000 from your customer because he has given you the debit note and you are satisfied with the return. So what you will do, you will also reduce the value. Yeah, he reduced the liability. The customer reduced the liability in his books. You will reduce the asset because Rahul is your asset, isn't it? You have to receive money from Rahul. So you will reduce the Rahul account. See here, to customer account credit. Previously, you, you know, debited over here. 10,000 debit balance is there. Yeah, Rahul debit balance is at 10,000. You have to receive 10,000 from Rahul. But now what you're doing, you are reducing it by 2,000 because you're only going to receive 8,000. Yeah, so to customer account, how much? 2,000. Asset has been reduced. How it has been reduced? By crediting it. So that's why you have to issue credit note. By sending out the credit note, you are accepting that, you know, you are satisfied with the return and you are letting the customer know that I have yeah, you are saying this i have credited your account in my books i have credited by credited means that i'm no longer gonna receive 2000 from you and i'm not expecting 2000 from you okay so credit note will be issued it's simple as that it's not difficult people complicate these things it's really simple why debit note is issued because the other party account was debited here why credit note is being issued because the other party account is credited because of this transaction this return all right so that's the idea over here so you have to understand all these things because these are the basic things which will be very helpful for you even in the final accounts and everywhere you know even in the interview also they might ask you what's debit note what's credit note now the definition is easy to memorize and go and answer there but you should have an idea yeah right so you got the idea now about the purchase return and sales return basics and the general entry also you understood yeah so now let's directly go to the uh, subsidiary books problems of purchase return and sales return. There is not much there over here. It's exactly like purchase book and sales book. Little bit difference is there. You know that separate column will be there for credit note and debit note because these are what these are the source documents to record these transactions. Okay. So a separate column will be there for their numbers, credit note number and debit note number. That's the format. That's all you need to know. Directly we'll move on to the uh, problems right now. Okay. Let's move on to the problems. Now, see the question of purchase return book over here. It's very simple. Enter the following transactions in the purchase return book of Simon. 2021, April 15. Return goods to Krishna and sons for 2000. Allow trade discount at 10%. Now, don't worry about trade discount. Okay, don't get scared. It's very simple. What we have done with trade discount always, we just have deducted it. In sales book also, you have seen in purchase book also. So, let's deduct it over here also. It's simple. Fine. So let's see the April 15 transaction in the purchase return book. Now see the format over here, the same format you have date particulars. Yeah, here we have also debit note number in purchase return book. Okay, and then ledger folio and then the inner column for the calculation purpose, we can call it as details and the amount, the main amount column. All right. So the April 15 transaction is we are returning the goods back to Krishna and sons and the amount of the goods is 2000. Right. So it's simple. See the recording over here. Krishna and sons, April 15, Krishna and sons. Yeah. If the exact detail is given what we have written, for example, we have written, you know, uh, 
clothes or whatever the item is you can underline the krishna and sons and write the item below you can do that but here no information is given so directly krishna and sons 2000 in the inner column because there is a trade discount of 10 percent so 10 percent of this 2000 is equal to 200 so 2000 minus 200 that's equal to 1800 in the uh, in the outer column fine so we are done with the april 15 transaction and then we have april 20th transaction see here return goods to rife traders for 5000 as the goods were damaged so we are returning the goods back to rife trade traders and the amount is 5000 so it's very simple there is no trade discount nothing directly into the outer column april 20 rife traders and they you know they haven't mentioned what item also so you don't need to underline we don't need to write any item nothing has been said so directly rife traders 5000 clear easy yeah and then what we have to do that's it just make the total see here april 30 at the end of the month we are making the total it will be decided by the business okay after how many days they are making the total the periodic total we call it right so purchase return we all know that purchase return has which balance opposite to purchase credit balance okay we write credit over here that's because we don't make mistake while doing the posting right so purchase return 6800 1800 plus 5000 that's equal to 6800 now we are also going to see how to do the posting into the ledger accounts so let's see how the posting will be done in krishna and sons see it's very simple krishna and sons who are krishna and sons to you yeah let's say you are simon who are krishna and sons to you krishna and sons are your creditor you have to pay to krishna and sons yeah krishna and sons creditor payables they are your liability liability has credit balance minus plus debit means minus credit means plus you all know this right basic things fine so what happened with krishna and sons you return the goods back to krishna and sons worth 1800 so your liability to krishna and sons decreased debited yeah krishna and sons debited because of purchase return 1800 you don't have to pay 1800 no more anymore to krishna and sons that's the interpretation okay you also need to understand the interpretation of purchase return book see here all these amounts what is happening to these amounts purchase return account is getting credited entirely okay see the journal entry understand the journal entry what was the journal entry the journal entry was krishna and sons to purchase return rife trader to purchase return so krishna and sons account is getting debited because of purchase return rife traders is getting debited because of purchase return okay so the second transaction rife traders what happened over here the same thing you don't have to pay 5000 you have returned the goods back so liability to rife traders has been decreased because of purchase return 5000 is that okay clear easy so that's how you will do the posting and then of course the double entry effect has to go the double entry effect will go with the periodic total at last after making the total the same way how you did with the sales book purchase book the same way periodic total will go to the purchase return account in purchase return account which has credit balance isn't it this account has credit balance it's exactly opposite to purchase account so minus plus credit balance means what debit means minus credit means plus so what happened with purchase return is it increasing or decreasing there was no purchase return before april 15 no purchase return has happened on april 15 purchase return took place on april 20 purchase return took place so that means purchase return is increasing yeah it's increasing and the periodic total you have to take 6800 okay so you can call it as by total as per purchase return book or you can also call it as by sundries as per purchase return book is that clear so this is how the double entry effect is completed for every debit there is an equal credit see here 1800 5000 yeah on the debit side and here on the credit side the sum of that 6800 is that clear fine so you got the so you understood how to prepare the purchase return book now let's move on to the sales return book question now here we have the sales return book question see here prepare sales return book in the books of Lokesh and company from the following transaction the first transaction is on see here april 6 2021 goods returned by manju and company okay manju and company is our customer he's returning the goods back to us we are receiving the goods what are the goods see the items over here two table fans at thousand each less trade discount of 15 percent simple let's do this the format is same date particulars but here we will have credit note number in purchase return book debit note number here credit note number that's the difference okay ledger folio and the inner column for the calculation purpose which we call it as details and the main amount column 
fine so the first transaction was manju and company right so write down manju and company and the date of the transaction april 6 so now what have you got back from manju and company you have got back two table fans at 1000 each so that's 2000 and then there is trade discount of 15 percent so just calculate that it's very simple 2000 into 0 0.15 that's equal to 300 so 300 is the trade discount what do we do with trade discount just deduct it that's all in the inner column so minus trade discount at 15 percent that's 300 2000 minus 300 that's equal to 1700 1700 in the outer column is that clear fine and then on april 12th yeah 12th april we have a transaction see here prabhu electricals return defective room cooler of rupees 4250 so who is returning goods back to us prabhu electrical that's their name so write down prabhu electricals underline it okay underline it and then and then take the item one room cooler the amount is 4250 4250 there is no discount nothing so directly into the outer column and only one item is there so directly into the outer column fine yes that's it that's all the transactions are so that's why you have to make the total so at last at the month end april 30 you are making the total sales return account you all know it has debit balance opposite to sales and the total is 4250 plus 1700 that's equal to 5950 is that clear so this is how you have to prepare the sales return book it's very simple yeah it's not difficult at all now the first 10 minutes of this video made you think that this is very difficult no it's not difficult i just wanted to make you understand few of the basic things which is very important for you to understand for the future purpose yeah is that clear right so this was the sales return book now let's understand the ledger posting of this how the ledger postings will go see ledger postings are very simple the first is manju and company who is manju and company to you you are location company so who is manju and company to you manju and company is your customer yeah he has purchased goods on credit from you yeah you have sold goods to him so that's why you have to receive money from Manju and company. He's your customer. He's your data receivables. Yeah. Data and receivables. Yeah. Data or receivables. So now what happened? He returned back 1700. If he's returning back 1700, that means you are not going to get 1700 from Manju and company. So Manju and company, this asset needs to be decreased because of sales return and that the amount is 1700. Okay, that's how you will do the ledger posting with entire logic manju and company has debit balance this is our asset we are no longer gonna get 1700 from him yeah from manju and company so decrease that amount decrease the asset manju and company is decreasing it's getting credited manju and company credit because of sales return yeah is that clear same with the prabhu electricals also we are not gonna get uh 4250 rupees from prabhu electricals our data our receivables our customer so this is prabhu electricals t account see here the ledger account we are not gonna get so prabhu electricals account this asset needs to be decreased because of sales return 4250 is that clear logic you have to get okay fine and then periodic total will go to as always sales return account okay similarly how in purchase uh, book in purchase account in sales book sales account in purchase return purchase return account here sales return book sales return account all right so the periodic total is of 5950 so now what happened sales return is increasing because sales return has taken place that means it's increasing now people have hard time to you know identify whether it's increasing or decreasing just think little bit see there was no sales return sales return have taken place taken place so of course it's increasing now in the accounting books of course it's increasing but in accounting books we don't have increase or decrease directly we have debit or credit yeah sales return has which balance it has which balance it has debit balance opposite to sales so that's why you have to debit plus okay so two sundries as per sales return book all right you can also say two total as per sales return book all right 5950 and see the sum of these two is equal to 5950 so the double entry effect is completed debit is equal to credit fine so this is how you have to do the posting of the sales return book or we can also call it as a return inwards book and one important thing i want to let you know okay in sales return book and in purchase return book we only record credit returns okay the goods which were purchased or sold on credit those goods are returned back 
then only those you know transactions are recorded over here in sales return book and purchase return book all right cash returns are not recorded over here because cash is involved so it will go to cash book fine so that's it for this video i hope you have got this okay and you have strengthened your basics regarding purchase return and sales return now in the coming videos we are going to discuss the cash books fine so that's it for this video see you in the next video bye